Welcome to our poetry sharing event. It is a pleasure to have the opportunity to share our talents with you today. We have been learning about poetry. Did you know that April is Poetry Month? Please do not limit your poetry intake to just one month. It is worthy of being celebrated all year long. Speaking of for a large group of people who can be stress producing, especially when there are people who you love and respect, such as the members of our audience today. Taking the time to, to prepare increases one's ability to share a message successfully. Please notice that we take the time to collect ourselves before starting our recitations. We can do this by taking a deep breath, closing our eyes to center ourselves, or by grounding our feet into a desired stance. speak with clear voices and articulate each one to the best of our ability. We have been working on eliminating any mumbling so you can enjoy each poem, each of the poems we will share. And hopefully we will remember to smile as this experience allows us to showcase our public speaking skills. We are delighted that you are here. Mr. Odell, a teacher, Mr. Odell, a teacher who has been working in our class this trimester, shared that public speaking is a common fear for many people. And we believe with practice we will be comfortable sharing our messages in front of large groups. This special event is one way that we are preparing for our future. Let's start now. First recitation is a humorous one. The class will be split by gender as we recite Boa Constrictor by Shel Silverstein. The boys will be led by Colson Edwards and the girls will be led by Shania Jackson. or any formation like our bio poems. Telling way poems can also describe a subject without directly <coughs> telling you what it is, like in the poem that Ian will read by Emily Dickinson. A narrow fellow in the grass occasionally rides. You may have met him, did you not? His note is sudden is. The grass divides as with the comb. A spotted shaft is seen, and then it closes at your feet and opens further on. He likes a boggy acre, a foot of corn, but when I chop them barefoot, I more than once at morn 
Half past, I thought I would flash, and braiding in the sun, and stooping to secure it, a wrinkle then was gone. Several of nature's people, I know and they know me, I feel for them a transport of cordiality, but never met this fellow, attended or alone, without a tighter breathing, and zero at the ball. Can you guess what the poem was describing? It cuts through the grass? Maybe it's a snake. Yes. Poems may be fictional as well, like another one of Shel Silverstein's poems. Please sit back and enjoy our third presentation of six. Nobody in the back. I cannot go to school today, said little Peggy and her cake. I have the measles and the mumps, a gash, a rash, and purple bumps. My mouth is wet, my throat is dry, I'm going blind in my right eye. My tonsils are as big as rocks, I counted 16 chicken pox, and there's one more that's 17. And don't you think my face looks green? But I like to cut, my eyes are blue. Up 
end up and five feet tall and plod. I go up to the stone wall for a friendly visit. When people think of being an artist, they often think of painters, sculptors, weavers, or dancers. During our, stu our study of poetry, we can see that we can be artists who use work to create masterpieces. Now, the now to the moment we've worked for, Claire Bunch will begin our recitations with another. She'll sing, sing silver sing for me. Valentine. I got a Valentine from Timmy Jimmy, Tilly Billy, Nikki Mickey, Ricky Dicky, Laura Nora, Cora Flora, Donnie Ronnie, Bonnie Connie. Eva even sent me two, but I didn't get none from you. <laughs> Nicely done, Claire. Kate Jacox will now share a poem that was written by Jim Taylor. The Star. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. As your bright and tiny spark lights the traveler in the dark. Though I know not what you are, twinkle, twinkle, little star. Thank you, Kate. <coughs> Andy Blackman will be reciting a poem by John Richard Moreland. The night is white, the moon is high, the bird tree leans against the sky. The cruel wind has blown away each little leaf of silver and gray. O lonely tree, as white as wool, that moonlight makes so beautiful. Thank you, Indy. George Tigo will now recite his poem by Felice Coleman. Leave me alone. Loving care, too much to bear, leave me alone. Don't brush my hair, don't pat me on the head, don't tuck me in to my in bed. Don't ask me if I don't ask me if I want a sweet, don't fix my favorite things too. Don't give me lots of good advice, and most of all, just don't be nice. When I fall, well I'm sorry, be nice to me again tomorrow. <laughs> Impressive, impressive summer, Karen Morris' poem has 
anonymous author. <coughs> I have a dog as thin as a rail. It got fleas all over his tail. Every time he flap his tail, the fleas at the bottom hop to the top. <laughs> Mario Metro and Andreas Liked It A Poem, written by favorite children's poet Jack Pervalewski. The Lion. The Lion has a golden mane and under a clever brain. He lies around and idly pours and lets the lioness do the chores. <laughs> Mario, Liam Elkhorn has a funny poem that he would like to share that was written by William Cole. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought I'd been the spelling bee and I'd get right at the top, but I started to spell banana and I didn't know when to stop. <laughs> And all the 
clouds that blame and die upon the earth will count it up, the number of the stars would be greater, they say, than all of these. Nice job, Carly. Delia Thompson, Delia Thompson will recite the poem she selected by Marquette Ch Spring Rain. The storm came up so very quick, it couldn't have been quicker. I should have brought my hat along, I should have brought my slicker. My hair is wet, my feet are wet, I couldn't be much wetter. I fell into a river once, but this is even much better. <laughs> Good work, Natalia. We need April showers for May flowers. Now my friend Rylan Manny will share a poem that was written by Elizabeth Coltsworth. March, a blue day, a blue jay, and a good beginning. One crow melting snow springs winning. <laughs> Thank you, Rylan. And I do will now recite that poem that was written by that was written by X. J. Kennedy. Help! Firemen! Firemen! State police! Victor's locked in Pop's valise. Robert's eating kitty litter. Doctor, lawyer, babysitter. <laughs> that was a fun one, Henry. Yeah, that was a fun one, Henry. Lola Barnes will share a G or Clark poem. The night is a big black cat. The night is a big black cat. The moon is her topaz eye. The stars over my she hunts at night in the field of sultry sky. I knew you would choose a poem about an animal. Well, thank you. Now my close co-presenter, so now you're checking the website, a poem by Maurice Sendak. October. In October, in October, I'll be host to witches, goblins, and a ghost. I'll serve some chicken on toast. Chicken soup on toast. Will be once, will be twice, will be, chick will be chicken soup with rice. <laughs> Savannah Allen will recite a Rose Magunder poem. Joyful. A summer day is full of food, a bank is full of money. A lilac bush is full with bees, and I am full of honey. <laughs> And, um, and, 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 
at its own stable door. of our program. We would like to ask Mario's mother to join us at the front of the room. <laughs> Mrs. Master Andrea spends each Thursday afternoon with us. She helps us with our reading and writing. She facilitates enlightening discussions. She encourages everyone to participate. And for that, we are thankful. Mrs. Master Andrea, thank you for the time and energy you share with us each week. <laughs> I love you, Mom, and I am proud that you help my classmates. to attend or helped us or helped us to prepare for this cheering event. We appreciate that all that you do for us. We may not say it often enough, but we truly appreciate our families and loved ones. Thank you. Thank you. 